I, Neelam Kulshrest, welcome you all on behalf of NIOS Studio. Today we will learn vocabulary building, active to passive vocabulary. Our learners, you must be surprised that sometimes we know a word but we can't use and sometimes we feel we do not know but we are able to use it. Do you know why it happens? It is because of active vocabulary and passive vocabulary. Active vocabulary you know is learners passive vocabulary is the words that they understand but do not use. Passive vocabulary learner understand and use in speaking or writing it is impossible to be fluent if you cannot understand. Uh, in fact, in active vocabulary you are able to speak and write well, but in passive vocabulary you are only able to read and listen and to some extent comprehend what the other person is doing or saying on the basis of general context. Passive vocabulary, the words that they understand but can't use. Active vocabulary, they understand and they can use it. And it is not that the words which are once in active or once in passive will remain there. If you keep on using the words from passive, they will certainly become your active vocabulary. But if you stop using some words in your active vocabulary, soon they will go to your passive vocabulary. So, it is very, very important for all of us to use words which we have learnt recently, read recently, so that we are able to retain them for a longer time. Uh, normally, children feel that they do not know very many words. I asked a class of mine once, how many words do you think you know? And most of them were surprised when I told them that minimum 5000 words are used while speaking, reading or writing comfortably. Whereas, a very good speaker or writer might even have more than 80,000 words in the vocabulary. So, from person to person, from area to area, from qualification to qualification, this vocabulary size increases. But you must be surprised. Why should we have that strong vocabulary when we can manage with 5000 words? Yes, you are true, but then we need a strong vocabulary to understand more of what you read and to understand more of what you hear. Because if you are not able to understand clearly what the speaker is speaking, then maybe you may get a wrong meaning or maybe you may give a wrong response. Somebody is saying attitude and because you do not know the word, you answer, you reply to that person thinking the word is aptitude. So, it is very, very important that you should be able to comprehend the words that you hear, comprehend the words that you read or when you have to write after you have read something, say you have read a passage or you have heard something and you are asked to simplify that or you are asked to write a report about it. At that time, you will need a strong vocabulary and do not forget, when you have a good strong vocabulary, you can speak more intelligently and precisely and you know the children. The people who have got good vocabulary, they are certainly able to impress better and communicate more effectively in writing. And if you are good in writing, 
you know what will happen? Your scores will be higher in tests, especially essay tests, where language is tested. And when you are very good in spoken and written language, you'll be more confident speaking and writing. And what will this all bring to you? It will certainly help you get a positive impression at job interviews or it will help you get promotions easily. It will give you better chances in your jobs. So children, don't underestimate the power of vocabulary. The people, the learners with good vocabulary are always able to win the hearts of the audience. As good speakers, they are able to impress their audience easily. Now, words. When we say passive vocabulary, active vocabulary, what should we know about words? Words within themselves have a long family. We should know their meaning. We should know their pronunciation. We should know different forms of the words. We should know the grammatical use of the word likewise. We should know exact correct pronunciation of the word so that people do not misunderstand us. Now, you must be worried how to enhance vocabulary. Since now you know it's very, very important to have a strong vocabulary, but then what to do? You people are sometimes worried, sometimes very tense, as you feel it's not an easy task. Here, today we will learn the ways to enhance vocabulary. Very simple steps. Number one, that we should try to bring the words which are in our passive vocabulary into active vocabulary. And how can that happen? The teacher should explain rationale. Rationale like, say for example, we have a word audio. And if we know the meaning of audio, means listening. Then if I say audible, and if I know the meaning of able, then I will know something that can be heard. But when I say inaudible, means something that cannot be heard. So, rationale behind a word, then it is when the children are using, when the learners are using simple words, ask them to use better words. For example, there is a word good. Learners are normally using the word good. How was your food? Good. How was your day? Good. How was your mood? Good. How was the uh, journey? Good. So, the teacher should make efforts so that they do not use the word good all the time. How was the food? Tasty, delicious. How was the mood? Fantastic. How was the work? Excellent. So, there are so many words which can be used in place of good or bad or walk or speak. So, the teacher should always encourage them to use better words all the time. And while assessing also, weightage, importance should be given to the work where better vocabulary is used. Teach words several times before students use them fluently. So, this is for teachers to know that they should use the words again and again while assigning the tasks while speaking in the class so that the children, the learners are able to comprehend those terms and are able to use them in their own speech or writing work. Then how can we learn new words? We were talking about active and passive vocabulary, passive vocabulary which you already knew. But what about new words? 
when there is a new word we are not able to understand picture visual image will help. So, some pictures can be seen gestures and actions. So, learners especially language teachers should be very good at gestures. Say if you are using the word big you can say like this and when you are saying huge, large, enormous. So, this is how you keep on increasing the size of your hands showing the gesture show lexical relations means relationship of a word with other words then make them guess and predict. Uh, most of time we go to dictionary and try to find out the meaning, but it will be a good idea if the learners are given a chance to guess and predict on the basis of the background or the other words or the context in which the words are used. So, learners it will be very helpful to learn new words through visual image. So, when you look at an image, when you look at a picture because you already know that thing in your mother tongue it is easy to have a relation and then you are able to learn that word for the longer time. Then if you think a picture is not available or not manageable at that time, the teachers can show through gestures. Then some relationship can also be shown and teachers should never give the meaning on their own. They should give them some time. So, when they read, they should be able to comprehend the content and then guess what can be the meaning. This is how they can learn new words. Helping students remember new words, how can we help them? So, that the words that they learn, they come across, they are able to retain them for a longer time. For that there is a very interesting activity, you can play them in your houses also, you can play it with your friends. You can play with your colleagues using memorizing games and activities. Say there are 15 people in your group. Each member will speak a word and also repeat the word used by the previous speaker. Say the first person says camera, second person says camel, then second person will say camera camel, the third person will say camera, camel, cavity, fourth person will say camera, camel, cavity, captain. This is how you can have a special rule every time, say you can say same letter is to be used, you can say same area is to be used, you can say same number of letters also to make the game more interesting and more challenging. And then uh, words that they learn from TV, from newspaper, from magazine or from their friends, they should use them. Simply listening will not help you, simply reading will not help you. What you have to do, you, do, do is use them more you use the better speaker of the language you will become. Then there should be an environment around where the learners are encouraged to use new words. There should be some encouragement so that they should feel yes now I can use it confidently. Then how can they make the new words their own? their own means so that they can use it confidently in their own words. Like some people will use the word say endanger, others will always prefer to write jeopardize. So, this is how you are personalizing the new words. Every time you get around that meaning you use that word 
And it is a very interesting idea as learners, if you can make a record of new words, say you learnt new words, write it somewhere, so that every time you open your notebook or diary or record, you are reminded of the words which are given there. Then how can you memorize new words? This again is a problem. Sometimes we remember the word, but afterwards we forget. Very easy. You memorize synonyms, the words which are like them. Synonyms means with the same meaning. So, suppose you use the word wonderful, then awesome. So, you will learn two synonyms or two words and then you will be having a correlation with these two words and maybe you do not forget that word. Antonyms, antonyms means opposites. So, when you learn a word, try to keep in mind the opposite, then definition. This is very scientific way of memorizing new words. So, when you know the definition, you are very clear about the meaning of that word, the form of that word and you use it confidently and then description. So, if you know the description of a thing, say if you know it is large, if you know it is white, if you know the, a particular fact about an object, then that description will help you remember the new word easily. Now, using another very important thing is, you may know the word, say you know the word, but you do not know various forms. Say you know the word high, but you do not know the word height, heighten, long, length, lengthen, then sometimes it will hamper your speed for speech or writing. So, it will be a nice idea when you learn a new word, when you find or hear or read a new word, try to focus on the forms also, singular form, plural form, then noun form, verb form, etcetera. Being able to integrate the words into the regular vocabulary, repeated use. So, if you use it again and again, certainly the word will become your own word. Finding simple sentences in which the words can be used. So, it is not that you are learning words only for the sake of words. You are learning words, you are focusing on the words for the sake of using them, speech or in writing. So, the best idea will be when you learn a new word, talk to people, write in your writing using those words in simple sentences allowing using them in your own context. So, if you can use them, nothing like it, it will be very, very impressive to use those words and people will appreciate you. They will be jealous rather I would say, jealous of you for your uh, good vocabulary. Now, another very easy and interesting way is when you learn new words in your diary, you write down three columns, new words, before reading what you thought about them and after reading what you thought about them. So, this is how you will be clear about the meaning or the forms of the words and certainly it will encourage you to be more correct, more appropriate while using those words. Then again, we have memorized, we have learnt, we have made a record, then after some time the same thing, you forget the words. Then what to do? How to retain words? Learning the definition that we have already done or multiple definitions. Synthesize within your memory bank, have a correlation, try to organize these words and then easier recalling of the word in the future through a dictionary or other resource that can also be one of the ways to have the exact meaning of the word. Become familiar 
with the many definitions of a word, learn the instances in which the word can be used. So, these are some of the ways which will help you retain the words. Then sometimes out of curiosity, out of over enthusiasm, learners learn a lot of words in one go and then they forget. So, what is the ideal way? Learn a small amount of words at a time. Using small groupings of similar words can be the most effective way to increase your vocabulary. Say you want to learn a word which is related to weather. You can prepare a word web. In the center you write weather and then find out more words related to weather like hot, rainy, sunny, etc., etc. So, this is how if you start grouping words which are similar in meaning, then certainly you will be able to learn more words and retain them for a longer time and use them in your vocabulary. Then learning the structure of the words and being able to define the structure of the word like inaudible I gave you an example, in is a prefix, audio is a root, able is a suffix. So, learning the root of the word, prefix and even the suffix of the word. Using this method to learn the word enables you to learn the word from the root upwards. Say for example, you know the word bio and then bio is a root. Bio means, yes, bio means life, good. So, if you know the word bio means life and when you come across the word biology, when you come across the word biography, when you come across the word autobiography, then suddenly the words, the meaning will be very, very easy for you to comprehend. Biology, logy stands for science. So, a science that deals with life. So, when you know the roots, prefixes and suffixes, things become very, very simple, very, very easy. Uh, for example, the words audio, astro, these root words are given here. You can learn roots and then it will be very easy for you to learn the words related to that root. Likewise, prefixes and suffixes. There are some suffixes which make the opposite like regular, irregular, visible, invisible, numerable, innumerable. So, when these prefixes are added to the word, they become opposite of the word, honest, dishonest. Likewise, multi means many. So, when you know the word multi, the moment you find out a word with multi, you know plenty or you know many of the same type. So, if you are good at learning prefixes, suffixes, roots of the word, it will be very, very easy to learn more and more words and to be very honest, you will be able to retain them for longer and impress your listeners or readers using the words in direct conversation with others that are also learning the words. So, when you use them while talking, so not only you are benefited, even your listeners are benefited by the words that you have used. Writing the words, so when you have a word when you have learnt a word, when you are able to retain a word, not only use it in speech, also use it in writing works. To learn, you can have a rule for yourself to learn one word per day. So, daily, if you learn one day word, write it somewhere, make a diary, write the spellings, know the meaning, know the pronunciation then certainly you will become a very rich person 
in the use of vocabulary. Then how to have more and more vocabulary? Integrate. When you know one root, when you know one prefix, one suffix, one new word, try to integrate it with the prior knowledge that you have got. Then repetition, using the word again and again. Then multiple opportunities to be to use new words in reading, writing and discussion. Then how can we improve our reading? So, you can use it for literature, reading literature, make some clubs and have some groups where you are using new words and showing in writing and speech both. Structural brainstorming. So, this will also help you. Say the teacher knows the children have learnt the words in a particular area, then the tasks should be set in such a way that the learners are able to use those words in a better way. Thank you very, very much.